In the Pacific Northwest, we know the importance of red cedar. For millennia, Native Americans have used it for their home, art, tools, and boats. But this wood had a modern benefit. It helped beat the Nazis, and it helped bring people together. And the building I'm standing in tells that story. <laughs> The University of Washington Shell House is an important wooden historic structure that stands on the shore of Lake Washington. It's at a fascinating intersection of history. This area in Mont Lake in the shadow of Husky Stadium was where Native Americans portage between Lake Washington, Lake Union, and eventually over to Puget Sound. It was here that the U.S. Navy, during World War I, built a large hangar to train personnel on seaplanes. After the war, it became home to the University of Washington's rowing teams. And it also became the workshop of a brilliant, innovative designer of boats, an Englishman named George Pocock, who found a way to make racing boats faster and cheaper. The most famous event involving Pocock's boats was the famous boys in the boat race at the 1936 Berlin Olympics when the UW Husky team beat the Nazis, beat the Italians to win the gold medal. It was an embarrassment for Hitler and the Third Reich and has been immortalized in a best-selling book. But there was another lesser known, interesting race that happened a few years later. It was called the Great Race of 1941, and it pitted the UW Husky crew against a group of Swinomish tribal canoe racers. The event was conceived by Swinomish tribal elder Tandy Wilbur, and the idea was that it could improve relations between the white community and the tribe, in part by showing this common interest in competition and physical prowess. Canoe racing was a longtime tribal tradition. Two Swinomish boats, the Lone Eagle and the Susie Q, had 11 paddlers each, and they were paired against two eight-man Husky crew boats. The event took place in November, in the slough between the Swinomish Reservation and the town of Laconner in Skagit County. The attending crowd got to see these two cultures side by side in their cedar boats. Who won? No one really knows or cares. Some say it was the Swinomish, some say it was the Huskies. The real important thing was this cross-cultural exchange, an unusual activity for its time.